They nicknamed him the Californian Grizzly Bear, the Iron Man of the Rope Square, the boil maker from Carroll, Ohio, USA. He stood 6 foot 2 and weighed 220 pounds. They say he was the most powerful of all the heavyweight champions. His name? James Jackson Jeffries. Now that's a great name for a prison, isn't it? Jeffries started his boxing career as sparring partner for James J. Corbett while Corbett was preparing for his challenge for the heavyweight championship of the world against Bob Fitzsimmons. James Jeffries knew little about boxing, but he was hard as nails and didn't mind being used as a punching bag for Corbett in order to learn the pugilistic trade. Witnessing the Californian Grizzly getting plastered three nights a week without a complaint of the punishment that James J. Corbett obligingly handed out to him was ex-middleweight champion of the world, Paddy Ryan. He had taken a shine to the young Jeffries and taken him under his wing. You're not going to last long in this game, son, if you keep sucking up punches like that every night. And he encouraged Jeffries to fight out of a crouch and hold his hands higher, bobbing and weaving. This style suited Jeffries to a T. So now the Californian Grizzly is coming forward, firing shots with each hand loaded with dynamite. With that change of tactics, that sparring became much more competitive, and Jeffries found himself out of a job and no longer a punching bag for Corbett. From here on in, to climb through the ropes with Jeffries meant you really were taking your life in your own hands. Jeffries' opponents were now being knocked out in succession, including Tom Sharkey and the Black Prince, Peter Jackson. By now the title had changed hands, and Bob Fitzsimmons had knocked out Corbett and held the belt. Corbett's manager, Brady, greedy as most of them are, wanted to control another world champion and had wired James Jeffries to dump his friend and manager, Billy Delaney, guaranteeing if he did, he would get a shot at Bob Fitzsimmons' title. James initially refused, but Billy Delaney realised that they were caught between a rock and a hard place. He advised Jeffries to sign with Brady, so James turned up with Delaney to sign the contract. This is now my new trainer. You take us both or not at all? Brady had already signed the contract with Fitzsimmons' fight. Reluctantly, he agreed. This became a financial boom for all concerned. Bob Fitzsimmons was not impressed with the powerful Jeffries. He had coined the phrase, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. In fact, the night before the fight, Bob was prematurely celebrating his win with friends in the local tavern. Jeffries was not impressed. The fight took place on the 9th of June, 1899, in New York City. As a last play of gamesmanship, Jeffries, with the referee and his manager, knocked on Fitzsimmons' changing shed door, walked straight in and asked if he could clarify some of the rules before declaring war. Like, for instance, if I was to say, grab Bob like this and give him a big bear hug, squeezing the living kidneys out of the skinny fits, and then say if I was to throw him on the ground like this, biffing Fritz to the floor like a rag doll, would this be permissible? Well, Fitz's eyes were as large as an owl. The referee was speechless. He had no idea that this wasn't Jeffrey's plan. They promptly turned and walked out of the door as quickly as they'd entered, leaving the shed in a deathly silence. All strategy helps, but reality is, James J. Jeffries was going in the ring with a man who appeared to be unbeatable, and Jeffries knew it. Secretly to cover himself, he placed $5,000 on his opponent, Bob Fitzsimmons, to win the fight. That's called a reality check. As the men climbed through the ropes, the size difference was astronomical. When the bell went, Jeffries was taken by surprise to see the man from down under, Bob Fitzsimmons, forcing the pace, appearing to have no respect for Jeffries' unbelievable power. But Fitzsimmons discovered it in the second round, when he was flattened by a murderous punch. On rising, he fought back with both hands and landed clean shots, opening up wounds all over Jeffries' face. Fitzsimmons now moved around the ring, trying to keep away from an oncoming slaughter. But when the Californian grizzly landed punches anywhere on Fitz's body, he was in shock from the blast. After nine rounds, Fitzsimmons was well ahead on points. But during the tenth, James Jeffries landed a hard left rip to the stomach and an overhand right to the jaw. Fitzy was now in dire straits, and the 24x24 24 24 ring was now not big enough to hide. He bravely came out against the advice of a second to shape up for one more round. Even the crowd wanted the fight stopped. Hard swings to the head from both hands landed firmly on Fitzsimmons. He hit the ground with a sickening thud. The crowd leaped to the feet. No one expected Bob Fitzsimmons' first title defence to end in such a dramatic way. Bob lay prostrate on the ground, a sick man he was. A new champion had seized the throne. 
Fitz was reputed to have put plaster of Paris in his gloves to give him a punch like a brick. Jeffries, upon hearing this, said, If he can beat me without in his gloves, he can beat me without it. Who cares? I'll beat him anyway. He never denied the accusation, but after the event, all Fitz's knuckles were broken, as well as his right thumb. Jeffries had both cheeks broken, as well as his nose, for the seventh time, plus four ribs smashed. Neither fighter complained. Don't you love these guys? James Jackson Jeffries defended his title more than any man before him, knocking out Bob Fitzsimmons twice, James J. Corbett twice, knocking out Peter Jackson out in three rounds, as well as holding the record for the quickest championship knockout, 55 seconds. Jeffries also holds the claim to this day for fighting the fiercest battle for the heavyweight championship of the world against Tom Sharkey for 25 unbelievable non-stop action rounds. After the fight, Jeffries was arrested. The police thought Sharky would die and James would be up for murder. But Sharky was a hard man to kill. Jeffrey was released the following day. The Californian grizzly bear was never knocked off his feet. He also offered to fight the three top contenders on one night. Sam Langford, the fearless Black Panther, placed an ad in the paper, as was the custom in those days, stating that he'd fight any man, anywhere, except James J. Jeffries. Corbett, Dempsey, Burns, Sharky, all state that James Jeffries was the greatest of them all. James retired with the belt, undefeated. This is Billy Graham, over but not out. Round five coming up. <laughs>